we'll quickly see a demonstration of how we'll define a new user we will assign him the responsibilities we will assign him the rules and then we will assign or give him the grants associated with the rules and what significance grant has what significance uh, uh, role management has we will see it separately uh, on the impact from an impact perspective yeah? so step one uh, let us go to the forms we are going to navigate through system administrator yeah FND user form security user define now here comes the first question if an if a user is not having a valid employee record can he or she access AME module answer yes or answer no the answer is yes a user without a valid person associated in the FND user form can use approval management engine okay is it applicable for all applications that support RBC like I expenses no a user with uh, without a person will not without a person associated in the FND user form will not be able to access I expenses and you will not be able to give him grant so this exception is only for uh, applications like AME that's understanding one so let us go step one here I'm going to define a user in the user form once again for people you can log into the system using operations welcome you have system administrator responsibility security user defined yeah <coughs> once you go into this form you can type in a username AME user and then append it with the number that has been given to you by Kiran um, enter a password save yeah this is the part one and in the responsibilities please assign yourself system administrator another responsibility workflow user web applications optionally you may assign you may not assign it's up to you but this is a fairly important responsibility if you want to track down notifications if you want to see who where the notification is stuck with somebody of course uh, functional administrator the three responsibilities yeah so these three are FND responsibilities they have nothing to do with AME yeah so I've just defined a user entered a password yeah there is no employee customer or supplier associated with it there are no indirect responsibilities it is blank securing attributes are blank and I have just defined three regular direct responsibilities to the user now step one how does this user get access to AME yeah so remember in our discussion we talked about there is something called as role and then there is something called as grant so we need to log in to go into user management and then we need to go into the functional administrator now to get into user management typically the username that you need is of sysadmin yeah so the username password of this uh, instance is sysadmin sysadmin so first thing that I'm going to do is my AME user 99 I'm going to assign I'm going to first log in uh, into the instance as system administrator of the instance yeah. log out and then we will perform or give him necessary role yeah AME user 99 will get a necessary role so I'm going to log in as sysadmin Although user management may also be given or user management in itself is a responsibility that comes from RBAC. So alternatively this responsibility can also be given to users like operations welcome. Uh, so somebody with uh, same thing just like we are going to assign this role the administrator needs to assign the user management role to any user he will have access to user management. Yeah. So let us go here LMNOPQ. Okay here I see user management. So we talked about this responsibility this is the first step what we are going to do we are going to assign a role to a newly created user to have access to AME responsibilities so click here 
and then we'll navigate to the first link called users which is the first function within the menu okay now I define the user called AME and then I give the number 99 I want to search for that user so this is a, this is the place so this is a, the form of user management let us try to understand the anatomy of it like every other Oracle screen this begins with the search um, within the first tab so there is a tab sub tab design the tab is user management the sub tab is users and within which there is the search function you can search by any of these attributes username email last name or first name organization or role now organization and role is something that you define as a part of role based access control the first four is also present in the FND user so I have used the username which is the uh, the data from the FND user that we created and I searched it here I can see AME user 99 the status is active yeah so there are three kinds of uh, statuses that uh, are there to an FND user you must be aware active external and um, uh, expired which are which are three uh, statuses so it is important that a user is active so it will be when you define the user and we click on update link here okay now the responsibilities that we assigned manually in the FND user form you can see that the roles associated with those responsibilities are already visible here now to assign a new role to the user what we would do is we'll click on the assign roles button yeah on this page you will also see there is a cancel button if you want to navigate back to the main sub tab reset password if you want to reset the password save and apply these are the two buttons whenever I make any change here I will be using these two buttons to make sure that the changes get into the database yeah and then there is active from and active to this is something that uh, comes from the FND user we will not touch it so I click on the assign role button because that is the next obvious action that I need to do okay now here what we are trying to do is we are going to make this person AME user 99 have access to the role of a business analyst who is going to define the rules understand model conditions even troubleshoot existing infrastructure being set up in AME so he is uh, from a role perspective is called as approvals management business analyst we are also going to make sure the user has access to administrative features of approval management engine and the role that defines or gives the privileges to have access to administrative aspects of AME is called as approvals management administrator yeah uh, I'll just uh, write it down so that uh, rules management business analyst okay, this is basically the consultant and approvals management administrator these are the two important roles yeah uh, remember we are still here we are at user and we are at role we have not gone anywhere down yeah and then there are two other things that are waiting we will try to see what happens and there is a reason why they are out of the box so we are at user and then we are assigning a role that's what we are doing here so let us uh, now there are two ways to search roles and responsibilities we can use a common search window it will search in both the both the it will basically look up in both the tables either through a role or through a responsibility we will choose role and I'll simply give approvals because I need to see what are the rules related to approval yeah so the first one uh, is the approvals management administrator this inherits process owner role and system administrator role for AME and can create action type and modify default configuration variables configuration configuration variables so I'll check that yes this is something that I want to grant and approvals management business analyst this role gives full access to business dashboard pages does not have default config variable access because that is there in the administrator and action type create access because that is also there in the administrator so put together when I select these two uh, roles I am basically creating a super user in AME yeah because whatever this doesn't have this has and this naturally is the administrator role this need not have the business analyst part of it so I'll select these two uh, on the right hand side you see the user management code um, this is something which uniquely identifies the role when we define it in the role definition page yeah here this is where we have 
the role definition page, role categories and role inheritance. That is where we give this code, not very relevant. I'll just select it. So every time a role is granted to a user, it is required that he or she gives a justification as to why this be, role is being given to on this particular user. Now if you look at uh, traditionally, there is one big complaint that everybody who is who was using Oracle application has is that there is no audit trail or audit uh, aspect which allows attachment to be given attachment attachment feature to be given when a user is being granted a responsibility so typical process flow of the process is this user let's suppose I am working in an organization I have my internal support ticket tool I go and I say okay I need AME yeah my boss approves it it goes to the Oracle applications administrator he opens the send user form he, he queries my username password gives me the responsibility period now two years three years down the lane when the auditor comes and he says typically in the financial areas why are you why have you given somebody a responsibility related to receive this this is violation of uh, segregation of duty or any other auditory compliances I do not have a track back mechanism where any uh, who has approved this request when was this entered and all of this track back was never there the only field where there can be a possibility to enter the reference of your support ticket is the description next to the responsibility that we assign in the FND user form. So to a certain extent to mitigate it, here they have given a justification column which has been made mandatory to ensure that tomorrow if there is um, this accepts up to 1084 characters. So you can describe the justification, enter the name of the approver who has granted and all of these details so that in case of any SOD challenges that we come across in the audit compliances this can be mined down yeah so I'll just simply enter a dot no, not very relevant now <clears throat> every role has a series of role inheritances also that you can see that whenever you're what we did is we assigned a role and naturally there are these two roles that are inherited and here in this case these are the roles that are inherited so there is just like you have a structure of menu submenu, here also we have roles and role inheritances. So if I am basically a business analyst, I naturally have access to uh, some of the aspects like being a process owner or, or some administrative access related to attribute definition and all. So those things you can see that uh, uh, those inheritances are also here. The status at this point is ready for submission. I'll click on save. Any questions so far? Okay. And then as you can see the moment I have saved the status is now changed to assign. Now I click on the apply button. Now sometimes after we do this assignment uh, you might encounter a problem that the user is still not able to access uh, the responsibilities associated with the rule. It is also very common that if you have RBAC implemented in your organization, immediately after a rule or responsibility is granted to the user, he or she is unable to access, he gets an error that this is a not this is not a valid responsibility for the user. Hmm? And there is a reason that error comes. So, uh, there are a lot of tables that need to be synced whenever there is a role uh, definition that happens. So to sync it optionally, this is optional, this is not required. There is a program in system administrator. Now I'm logged in as a system administrator within my system administrator responsibility. Which is called as workflow directory services user role validation. Yeah, you can search by typing percentage role percentage in the system administrator responsibility. Yeah, if this is not required. This is totally optional. I just want you to know if in case you run into any problems that a responsibility or a role is given to a user and he or she is not able to access it, what are the steps that you should be taking? Yeah, so you go to the system administrator, run this program, enter the username here. If you don't enter the username here, 
it will run for all the users of the system so specifically we give the username here role is optional you may give you may not give remaining free attributes fix dangling users set it as yes add missing user role assignment set it as yes w update who column the who columns set it as yes uh, number of parallel process can be left blank and click on the ok button and submit button so basically this will synchronize the role definition role responsibility definition with the user table across uh, across across the module and the user ideally is supposed to uh, ideally will be able to access the responsibility without getting the error that i talked about yeah and this will take some time but in the meantime what we have done we have assigned the the, the relevant role now we'll log in as ame user 99 and see what happens Okay. Okay. So now here I can see that there are two responsibilities that came by default: uh, approvals management administrator and approvals management business analyst. I have never assigned these. These come by by other role. These are the three responsibilities I manually assigned. And I think application diagnostics is. An indirect responsibility that has come. Uh, so let us click on approvals management business analyst and let's see what we see. Okay, so here this is the business analyst dashboard. Now this dashboard is something that you are going to see a lot and you are going to work a lot in next three days. And now here you see that there are there is nothing that I can do. Okay, let's click on this. Uh, there is something which is called as a transaction type. I am not able to search anything. I am not able to see anything here. Even though one has access to the role, uh, just having the access to the role is not enough. Yeah, there is the necessary grant and permission set that is required for the user or individual to have, have access to the data within the role or data within the responsibility granted to him through the role. So step two, what we are going to see or, or what we are going to see is uh, we are going to create the grant. Now, uh, in the Excel sheet again sorry here in the excel sheet we said that there are two responsibilities that we are going to use one is user management to assign the roles and second is the functional administrator to create a grant yeah uh, the grant itself is inherent so it has some permission sets but after this is done the user will have access to the data within this responsibility so I am uh, logging in. Uh, I've basically navigated to the functional administrator responsibility, uh, and within the functional administrator responsibility, there is mm, this is the page which opens up. It starts with the security tab, and then there are a number of other tabs. Within security, the first sub tab is grants, and like any other Oracle uh, screen, this starts with the search, and then followed by the create. Uh, transaction option so what we will do is we'll click on the create grant role because we need to give grant to AME user 99 yeah now grant creation is is very very uh, administrative process uh, so I am uh, going to enter some of these details here with the name of the grant this can be made uh, uh, more logical by entering details like grant for AME role of yeah and then enter this in the description the name can be up to 240 characters description up to 1000 characters now here uh, comes the grantee types yeah a grantee type usually from security perspective it is better that we have a specific user or a single user one user per grant and yeah? that's how you establish most control most control uh, now here in the grantee we will use Amy user 99 the user that we defined remember this user doesn't have an employee uh, so I'll just select the grantee at this level I can restrict the access of this grant to a specific operating unit or to a, or I can bind it to a specific responsibility responsibility in turn may have the MO operating unit defined through which it is naturally restricted to a specific operating unit uh, but at this point, I'll just leave it blank so that this user has access to all operating units across all responsibilities. Now here, 
the the part three of defining a grant this is divided into four parts the first part we define the data security uh, what layer of uh, data within on this grant the user has access to then there is the object data context uh, also called as the ODC uh, the three letter acronym for this is ODC where we define the the specific uh, context of the application which is going to get involved again this is technical uh, there are only two things that you need to understand as, as AMV administrator the object for uh, data security is going to be AME transaction types because I want my user to have access to transaction types what are transaction types we'll discuss in a while we want the user to have access to transaction types yeah transaction types basically are the building bridge between the integrating application and the AME yeah so like we have purchase requisition transaction type the invoice approval transaction type that is the bridge which connects AME with the integrating application so we want the user to have AME transaction types I click on the next button yeah uh, here uh, we select the data context type as all rows yeah not to a specific instance or instances just leave it as all rows and then here the most important aspect is the permission set yeah the permission set gives the user or the grantee access to certain navigation and menu items or functions within the within the role uh, responsibility of the role that is granted to him so here there is a function set called as AME calling applications yeah why AME calling applications this is actually also a attribute uh, of the AME workflow this is the first attribute of the AME workflow with which an integrating application talks to and uh, if you want to actually set up AME it is important that you have access to this permission set but AME calling applications will this is an important uh, element you can uh, have a note of this and then we click on next and then we click on finish